Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power minus 12 x equals 17, and we're going to be solving for x values. I don't know why that 4 looks a little different, even though I use the same font. It kind of looks a little comical, doesn't it? Anyways, so I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So the first method is something that I learned from one of my viewers that comment a lot and also comment great things for on this channel and A plus BI. So I'm very grateful for your comments. Awesome, very informative and keep up the good work. So this is something that I learned from Nadia Fan and here's how it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and add 12x to both sides. And then here's what we're gonna do. We're going to make the left-hand side, we're gonna turn it into a perfect square. And by adding something appropriate, but we have a quartic x to the fourth. So obviously it's gonna look like x squared plus some constant to the second power, make sense? So in other words, I'm gonna do the following. I'll be adding 2k x squared plus k squared to both sides so that the left-hand side become x squared plus k quantity to the second power. Make sense? And of course I have to do the same thing on the right hand side since I have a quadratic. Let's add that first and then bring in the 12x, right? And then I have a constant 17 and then I can just add the k squared. So far so good? Awesome. Now these two things are equal. And what does that mean? I want my left hand side, well I don't want, it's already there. So the left hand side is a perfect square. That's perfect. So is the right hand side. But how can something that looks like this be a perfect square? Easy. That's a quadratic and quadratics are perfect squares if their graphs are tangent to the x-axis or in other words, they are, they have a discriminant of zero, right? If delta is zero, we have one real solution and that's when they, where they touch the x-axis. So delta must be zero for the above quadratic. Let's go ahead and write it down. Delta, which is the discriminant, is b squared minus 4ac. c is 17 plus k squared, which is our constant. And guess what? This gives us a cubic equation, right? Isn't that awesome? Let's go ahead and expand it. When you go ahead and distribute it, you're going to get 144 minus 8k times 17. To keep a long story short, can I just give you the equation? Take a shortcut here. You're gonna get 8k cubed plus 136k minus 144 equals zero. Yes, you can divide both sides by eight and now put the constant on the right hand side like this. And what is 136? I think 136 is eight times 17. So when you divide by eight, it should be 17, right? And then when you divide 144 by 17, I mean eight, <laughs> what is that gonna be? If you divide it by four, that's gonna be 36. So it should be 18. Right? So this will turn into an 18. Uh-oh, I don't even need the quadratic formula, do I? Because the solution is so obvious. Do you see it? You're like, what? K is equal to one. Come on, it's kind of screaming at you, right? Isn't it? K equals one, yes, exactly. Because if you look at the sum of the coefficients, you're gonna realize that hopefully. Okay, that's very important for polynomials. K equals one we got one solution, which is good enough because that's what we needed. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We had x squared plus k squared equals 2k x squared plus 12x plus 17 plus k squared. And now we're gonna replace k with one. That's gonna give us x squared plus one squared equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 17 plus one, which is equal to 18. Awesome. Well, does this look like a perfect square to you? Maybe it doesn't, but if you take out the two, you're gonna see it better. Let's do it. And yes, we get x squared plus six x plus nine, which happens to be x plus three squared. Great, but what about the two? Don't worry, we'll take care of it because algebra can take care of pretty much everything, right? Okay, it's gonna solve all your problems, especially in algebra. So now we kind of have squares on both sides. If you square root both sides, by absolute value, I invoke the absolute value, you get plus minus square root of x plus three. 
I mean, you could also subtract this and do the difference of two squares, but that's kind of painful. It's much better to do the per, uh, square roots and go with the absolute value. So far, so good. This is going to give us two equations. And guess what? They're both quadratic, so we can solve them. Let's go ahead. X squared plus 1, let's use the positive root first. We're going to get that. Let's put everything on the same side. And we'll get this. And yes, let's solve it. How do you solve it? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 2, minus 4ac. a is 1, so we can skip it, divided by 2. If you distribute here, you're going to get 12 root 2. And then 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And then all of that is divided by 2. Can we denest 12 root 2 minus 2? Yes, you can, but why do you care, right? Let's just leave it like that. That gives us two solutions. Great, but this is a quartic, right? There should be two more. Where do they come from? From the minus sign. Yes, that's what it is. So let's go. We have x squared plus 1 equals the negative root 2 multiplied by x and then 3 root 2. And we'll put it together again the same way. If you do that, you're going to get something a little different. And guess what? When you try to solve it, you're going to realize something. Did you see that? Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. Uh-oh. 1 plus 3 root 2 is already greater than 2 and you're multiplying by 4. Make it even bigger? Oh, come on. This is going to turn into complex solutions. And how do you solve them? Let's go ahead and take a look. You can just negate the inside and take care of it. So this is going to look like negative 12 root 2 minus 2. If I didn't make any mistakes. And then this guy here is negative, obviously. So if you multiply it or write it as negative 1 times a positive number, that's going to give you negative 1 times this. And then when you square root it, you're going to get an i from here with the plus minus sign. Both square roots are considered. And you're going to get something that looks like this, I think, right? 12 root 2 plus 2 under the radical multiplied by i. All of that is divided by 2. And in total, they should give you all the solutions. Now, i got to show you the second method real quick. And then I'll show you some results from another source. Okay? So, here's the second method real quick. If you go ahead and write this expression, and I want to be able to basically factor it, okay? How do I factor this expression? It's missing a lot of terms, so that's kind of nice. Well, I want to factor it as x squared plus ax plus b. That's one of the factors. And the other one, since I don't have an x cube, I can use x squared minus ax. Notice that x cube is going to cancel out during the process. And of course, the last term, the constant term, you can use a c, but I want to assign negative 17 over b. So when I distribute, it's automatically going to give me negative 17. And this just reduces the number of variables you have to deal with. And from here, you're going to get some equations and something that looks like this, you know, b minus a squared minus 17 over b, x squared minus blah, blah, blah. You can do the rest. And you're going to find the a to be root 2 and b to be 1 plus 3 root 2 as before. And you can go ahead and solve each quadratic equation from here. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.